So this handout was a theoretical one where it's uh, concepts regarding YouTube. Okay, well, let's do some actions now, something actual. If you took part one of the class, we talked about creating a Google Plus account. If you didn't take part one, um, here's what we need to do. Uh, open up your web browser. So if you did create a if you did create a Google Plus account, we can easily attach a YouTube channel to it. If you didn't create a Google Plus account, we can still create a YouTube account pretty easily. Let's go to youtube.com and we are able to use YouTube without really being logged in and such. People are able to watch videos without being logged in. This is one of the few things that the other networks don't quite work as well. Pinterest is going to nag you every second. Please log in. And Facebook is also going to, as much as possible, but not as, pin, as much as Pinterest, tell you, please log in. You can use Twitter completely logged out. Um, Google Plus, to some degree, you can use it logged out. View content, at least. But YouTube, you can pretty much use it and look at all of these things logged out, but to really be able to comment or like and such, people need to be logged in. As for yourself, to upload a video and such, you need an account. So at the top right corner, when you go to youtube.com, click the Sign In button. And if you have previously created the Google Plus account, use that login to log in right here. If you don't have a Google Plus account, do you have a Gmail account? Any Gmail account will work here. So you can log in with a Gmail account. If you don't have Google Plus, if you don't have Gmail, you'll have to take a moment to create an account. So what I want us to do then, if you're able to, either sign in or sign up. Usually this one, everyone's a little bit on a different step here, so I'm happy to answer people's questions if you're having trouble logging in, but let's pause for a moment. Let me log in myself, and then everyone should log in if they'd like to. YouTube.com. On the top right corner, on the top right corner, you've got a blue sign in button. Oh, a question quick. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want to use my Mac here, can you, can you help me get the video over to my Mac? Did you bring a USB drive? Because the only way really is to copy it from one to the other. Uh, let's, see. let's see if we've got an extra one. Can I upload it to Google Drive? Um, Google drive? Possibly, but I might have an extra USB. We can do this. Uh, plug this in and then copy the video to this, and then plug this into the Mac and copy the video to the Mac. Okay. Yes. So I have a Gmail account, but I'm not using it. I now want to have my book book that has all my passwords. So should I just go back and just try to, to create an account with, with um, Google Plus? Because I don't recall having a Google Plus account. Um, well, if you go through the process of creating one, it might take a little bit longer than you might want to because then I'll be already moving forward. But you could give it a try. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we can. I'm going to pause for a moment and you could try to set it up. Yeah. Right, so we should all try to sign in to YouTube if anyone's having any trouble calling you over. Who wants to verify on the text one? Okay. Easy to make it more protective.
to save this code. And it's also going to save your money. So with a YouTube account, um, we have the ability as a consumer and as a creator. So most people use YouTube as a consumer. So YouTube consumer, YouTube creator. Consumer watches videos, comments, likes, dislikes, subscribes. Those are the actions of what a consumer may do. Uh, a YouTube creator can do all of those things. I'll say all of the above. But a YouTube creator can also create videos and ads and track stats and make money make money from YouTube so the creator can do anything that a consumer can do but then they've got these extra abilities make money off of YouTube upload videos track your efficacy stats and such. If you log into YouTube, it assumes, like I logged in, it assumes you're going to use this as consumer. Well, in the top right corner, it's showing my the name of my uh, a little initial of my account. And in my particular one, if I click there, it shows these different accounts that I have. You may or may not have more than one item there, but hopefully you see something that says Creator Studio. Go ahead and click Creator Studio. And this is the whole creator side of YouTube. This control panel, this dashboard here, then, is all about YouTube. Now, again, if this is very different on your screen, let me know because if we have just if you have just set this up it'll look different than mine if you've used it before it might look different so everyone often at this point is a little bit different but if it looks very different raise your hand and call me over so we can see the same thing if this is your if this is brand new because I'm using an existing account I've already got a video but if it's brand new it's going to not really show you anything here yes yeah, where are you? Does it say Create Studio? Click on the icon of your account at the top right corner. Project, okay. And you see Create Studio. Oh, okay. Okay. The confusing part also regarding YouTube before we do very much is when we talked about Google Plus, we have talked about that there was a personal Google Plus and a business Google Plus. And that's very similar on YouTube as well. I logged in and it may be showing me my personal account. Maybe it looks like this. You must create a channel to upload videos. Well, I created a, a, a Google Plus Business page and I want to attach a YouTube to the Google Plus Business page. For yourself, you need to figure out how you're going to do this and I'm happy to answer you individually to help you figure it out. But what I'm getting at is at the top right corner, because in my example I manage perhaps more than one company, I can switch to these different YouTube channels and upload different videos for different clients. If you don't have multiple things to choose here, most likely you have one 
personal account and you have to decide if that's how you want to run your YouTube or not you're free to create multiple YouTube channels and on this one channel I'm gonna focus all on food and on this one I'm gonna focus all on technology and on this one I'm gonna focus all on cats sure or you can do all of those topics on one channel sure it's up to you however you want to do this so we'll make notes that you can create multiple YouTube channels multiple YouTube channels on a topic pros are keep each topic separate keep each topic separate each audience separate each stats separate each stat separate as well um, content on a different channel a con of that is more work now you have to set up the logo and the bio and the about page all of that you have to do more work to run three channels you have to then upload video to all three of them you have to keep track of all of that look at three different stats screens deal with comment moderation of three different pages SEO wise uh, if you have multiple or single SEO wise doesn't doesn't really affect you it's about your content and if you keep just a one channel to have everything on one, you can organize via playlists. Um, playlists are like folders where you keep different topic videos together. Or you can use one YouTube channel. Pros and cons. Uh, less work because you're using one channel to, to to work with and then the con there is uh, more cluttered but what I would say about that is use playlists to organize there doesn't seem to be too much negativity or positivity if you create various channels for various topics. What could be annoying is for your users. If I've got Victor's channel and I'm uploading technology reviews and cake recipes and pet stuff, well the people that don't care about pet stuff are going to get notified that I just uploaded a pet video. People that don't care about the tech stuff will get notified when I upload a tech video. So all of this will be all cluttered together if I have one channel. If people keep saying, why did he keep uploading videos that I don't care about? Unsubscribe. You lost a subscriber. Whereas if I separate each topic into its own channel, the person that cares about pet stuff will get the notification about pet stuff. And the person that subscribed to the tech stuff will get the notification of tech stuff. But then I have all of these separate things that I have to deal with. So once you logged in here, this is what I'm saying. We might have to pause here a quick moment. Um, you might have one YouTube account. I have here multiple for different clients. Uh, they have it uh, over here. This is the best way to be safe, I think. Uh, you click on your logo at the top right. Right next to Creator Studio, you should see a little gear, which is YouTube settings. Click that YouTube settings. And hopefully you see additional settings. See all my channels or create a new channel. Let's look at that screen. See all my channels or create a new one. In this case, uh, it's asking me to create a channel. Again, depending on your your setup, yeah, it's showing it this way like that, and it might show it differently. Um, but here it is on mine, where it's showing these are the ones that exist. 
you have a Google Plus, and on that Google Plus, you can add a Google, a YouTube channel. So, let me pause for like one minute. If anyone has a specific question that you need to call me for, for you to decide how you want to set this up. Anyone have any questions? I say this because if you don't create a channel for your business or whatever and later on you decide, well I should have created a channel, you will not be able to easily move your video from one channel to another. You would have to download it off of one channel, delete it from that channel, then upload it to the other channel and you're going to lose all of the stats that were on the old account. If I had a thousand views when I uploaded it, when I uploaded my video to that channel, but I should have uploaded it to this channel. Well, you're about to delete your video here to move it here. You're going to lose those views. If you leave the video on this channel because I don't want to lose my thousand views, and then upload it here, YouTube will reject it. It'll say that video already exists elsewhere. So that's why I'm saying early on at this point. If if it's a little iffy for you, let me know. You want to have a specific channel for a specific topic. Yeah, I'm going to create a test one right now, and then we can delete it later. Sure. Can we rename it in the app where we put some videos in there? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, does YouTube require that you post or upload only original uh, videos as opposed to like including that list? Is there like a complete um, version? That's one of the things that is different on YouTube rather than the others. There isn't really a, re a retweet, a revid sort of thing. It, YouTube is like more about 99% your own original stuff. Uh, so think in terms about YouTube using it much more originally. You never know if someone else on YouTube is going to say, please take down my video. Or if YouTube itself will say, this video is copyrighted and we're going to take it down. Video blog. Oh. I need to do a quick verification here, so just one moment. This is to help prevent spam. Okay, so I created a, just a quick test channel. Um, let me get back to back to this. You're, you're going to switch to the various aspects of your channel by clicking your icon at the top right. Uh, going into the settings will show a variety of settings. Uh, I'll mention some of those. Clicking on the actual name of your um, channel takes you back there so kind of it's kind of a little difficult to figure out what you're looking at but there's the consumer side of it and then there's the creator side of it uh, yes yes that's people definitely see that 
So this is something that people would see, and therefore, just like every other network, I should put a logo, I should put about info, I should put a graphic to entice people to click that subscribe button, that follow button. So since we've talked about it several times with the other networks, I won't really go into it here, but uh, when you're actually looking at, if you, you know, if you look at my channel, this is your channel, this is your account, this is where you go in and click to change its icon and add that background graphic and channel description. Again, at your own leisure you need to fill this out, but the same thing I've said with the other networks. Think about in terms of writing under channel description and such complete sentences that have these keywords about what you're about for people to find you. So my amazing vlog here, if I'm writing technology reviews, I would write something like that. Keep up to date with the latest technology reviews. If I'm also giving away like, um, you know, recipes and such, and I'm going to say also we offer here recipes that will <coughs> get you out of your rut from the kitchen. Whatever, I'm going to write these descriptions to help me get found but I'm not going to stress so much to write five paragraphs there because it'll be the actual content itself. Like on Twitter, we have a short amount of space to write a biography, but it's going to be the tweets themselves that help me get found. On Facebook, we have that space where we were able to fill in a short description, a long description, and impress them, all of these things. But it's going to be what you're sharing on Facebook that's more valuable than that. So here, I could work on that at some point. I'm going to go back to the Creator Studio. Wherever you're at, go back to Creator Studio here. So I don't have a, you don't have a video yet. We'll upload a video in just a moment. I want to look at a couple of important settings first. Under the channel, on the left side, there's all of these sections that we can go look at. Under channel, over here. Uh, subsections, channel, status, and features. There's a button at the top called Verify. I, I won't go through that process. You can do it on your own. But Verify is just that you are basically certifying that this channel is legitimate, and you're going to use it properly, and you're a real person, and all of that. Because once you verify, you get other features, such as monetization. Mine currently says I'm ineligible. I can't make money off of my videos yet. I'll be able to once I do verification. That's going to want to send you an email, and you're going to confirm your email, and all that stuff. We won't do it. We don't need it at the moment. But at some point you should, especially if you're going to use this channel legitimately, because then I get the monetization aspect. Um, I get these other features like custom thumbnails. We will see that when we're on YouTube, All of these little preview pictures up here. The default will be that it's going to take a piece, just some random shot of your video. And sometimes the random shot will look really nice, and sometimes it won't. So with a custom thumbnail, we will be able to choose an exact thumbnail for maximum impact. We'll see where we do that in a moment. Yes? Yeah, probably this is part, but is there a way to make multiple channels on the one account? Yeah, if you go up to the same button up here, you go to the gear, YouTube settings, and then you will see down at the bottom, see my channel or add new ones. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So under these settings, at some point you want to verify, then it'll give you more options, such as videos that are longer than 15 minutes. Right now, they have to be under 15 minutes. You may want to upload a 20-minute long lecture. Well, you'd have to activate that. YouTube takes copyrights very seriously. And so here it's going to tell you about any copyright violations and community guideline violations. Uh, I find it so weird that it's backwards that I would assume if it's on the right side, because many of us read left to right, I assume this is the highest level. Whoops, I'm in trouble. I really get confused every time I see it, but they just changed this. Where I would assume that the good one is on the left, and then moving to the right is the bad one. 
but looking at the smiley face, okay, I'm okay, it's good. If I start to get any copyright violations, it will be listed here, and the purpose of that is that the video could be taken down, or worse yet, your channel could get deleted. YouTube can delete your channel if you violate too many copyrights. And then you lose all of your hard work and money. We have the ability to have people pay for our videos. That's another way to, to make money. Let's list here some monetization, how to make money from YouTube. How to profit from YouTube. Activate monetization, which is basically ads play on your video. You make money when people click. YouTube gets smarter and smarter in that if you upload certain kinds of videos, YouTube understands those videos and then it'll put ads on your video that will hopefully entice people to click. So when it's not just the number of views. 60,000 60, views on our video over there is not translating to $60,000 that we're earning off of that. Uh, it's about clicks. Ads play on the video before or after, whatever. And if someone clicks on it, then we profit. So one way to make money is YouTube will place ads on your video. And if people click on those ads, you make money. How much depends on a variety of factors. But the more subscribers, the more views, the more clicks, the more you profit off of your videos. Another way is, yes? So they don't have to not just watch your video, but they have to actually click on the ad itself as well? Technically, technically they don't have to watch any of your ad, I mean any of your video, and just click on the ad. They have to actively click on the ad, or just the ad just pops up? That's no, they have to click on it. They have to uh, click okay. and interact and show interest uh, in the ad. So the ad comes up on the video, mm -hmm. and the ad can click on to skip it to the website. Yes. Uh, okay, not just watch it passively. Okay. No, exactly, you have to be active. Where that ad appears, is that yes, you can control when uh, it appears. Not exactly where on screen, but when it occurs. Yeah. Question over here? Yeah. Okay. Paid content is another way to make money off of your, off of your channel right here, uh, which is that basically you're going to charge for your videos charge for people to see your videos, like subscriptions. Charge for people to see your video. So our ads are, are very passive in that you set up ads, and we'll see what that looks like later, but you set up and you set it up that ads will appear on your video, and then you just let it go. Paid is that you have to set it up that people will then now kind of pay you um, per video or a, or a subscription fee monthly, etc., and you're going to be making money that way to people, for people to watch your videos, to be allowed to watch your video. Um, notice ineligible because I haven't verified. Let's see, uh, I'll mention some things that stand out. Again, YouTube has its own live system. Instead of uploading a video that's complete, I can do the live streaming thing, which is that at that moment, my video, I turn on my camera and I can talk to all my fans on YouTube live. And then YouTube saves that on the channel so someone can play it back later. Fan funding is related to that paid content, fan funding, they should kind of call it a bit more like donations. That's another way you can make money off of your YouTube. Fan funding. Donations. So you ask people to donate to your channel, whatever amount that you ask, and if they do it, then you do it. Instead of relying on these ads, which could which work but could build wealth slowly, 
via fan funding you can directly ask people please donate ten dollars and you got ten dollars please donate a hundred dollars you know donate a hundred dollars if your content is good enough nowadays unfortunately it's very difficult for people to see the value of digital things we've gotten so accustomed to 99 cents a song and remember that it was fifteen dollars for a cd or more and then even movies you go off to the movie theater and yeah they're ten twelve dollars now and now people are so used to being able to watch that video for two ninety nine or free from various other sites. So with the fan funding, you need to have really good content to entice people to pay that amount of money. And it's going to depend on your audience. Some are a bit more tight walleted than others, perhaps. This audience might really be ready to pay you for your content. This other one will expect it for free. You don't know. There's various general settings. If I didn't really mention something, don't quite worry about it. The details are, the defaults are fine. But any questions on this status screen here? Question regarding subscriptions. Mm -hmm. There's a subscription section. Right? When they subscribe to your I guess, channel, mm -hmm. they're not, in effect, offering a paper. No, exactly. The default subscription model is that they've subscribed, but they're not paying for anything. There's a different one via paid content, where that one is the one where if they make a payment, they get different content. All of these that have a learn more, I would go to it to get all the details. What's the eligibility? How do you set it up? How does it work? All of them are going to have some sort of more help. Uh, let's go look at upload defaults. Status upload defaults of the channel. Uh, every time we upload a video, we need to spend a little time to craft its title and description, its SEO features, basically. Now, if we're uploading the same kinds of videos over and over, it's going to get annoying to type the same things on our descriptions and such over and over. So guess what? We have upload defaults. What will this be set to every time we upload? Which are changeable, of course. But every time we upload a video, we're going to have to set all of these things here. We're going to need to set, is the video public, unlisted, or private? The difference between those... Types of videos. Public unlisted private public is anyone can find and view your video they do a Google search they do a search in YouTube maybe you shared your video on Twitter anyone can find and view that picture I mean that video if it's set to public unlisted uh, no one can find, but anyone can view. Sounds weird. What this is saying is like the phone book. Everyone's phone number was in the phone book. You could pay to get your phone number unlisted. Your phone number would not show up in the phone book, but anyone could still call you. If anyone has your number and they share it with 50 people, they could call you. An unlisted video on YouTube is that if you try to search for it on YouTube or elsewhere, it's not going to show up on results. But you can share the link, the direct link to that video, and therefore that person can watch it. And that person can share that video to 50 of their friends, so now 50 other people can see it. And those people can share it to friends of friends. So it says that no one can find it unless they're like a VIP and they're in the know and they have the link. Private. No one can find, no one can watch. It's private. Only you have access to the video, only you can watch it. Actually, you can allow person by person who sees it. It's a very cumbersome system, but you can allow by individual emails, this person can see it, and this person can see it, and this person can see it. And it's not a way for you to upload an email distribution list of 50 people. You have to manually put in each person's email address can watch this video. 
So for really, for all intents and purposes, this is a private video is only on your channel for yourself for you to see. Or maybe you set it private for the moment until it's ready to be visible by the world. Maybe you have a specific time and date you want to show off your video. And we don't see it from this screen, we'll see it on another screen, but then the third type is scheduled. Scheduled is simply when will this video be available, which then you can further set to public and so forth. Set when the video goes public. Yes. Okay, so let's say um, we want to set a video to private just to to have it save some. Mm -hmm. What's um, what's the amount of time you can uh, have that video? Forever. You can upload it, set it to private, and it'll always be there. There's no space limitations on YouTube. So you can, like, the video can be as long as you want. Well, okay, the, the limitation of that depends on this over here. The length of the video is a different thing. How long can you have it on your channel? No limit. But how long can your video be? Right here, um, the default, if you have a brand new channel, only up to 15 minutes long. But if you click Enable, then you can have basically no time limit. And I personally have uploaded a three-hour long video, and it worked. It took a long time to upload, but I have uploaded a three-hour long video. So you have to do this first enable. The best thing for you to do would be verify first to get all the features and then do enable longer video. Category. There's not that many to choose from, which is a little odd. I think this is still a holdover from YouTube. YouTube celebrated, I think, 10 years old last year. And this is still a holdover from that. There's not a lot of categories here. I want to upload my uh, my recipes. Let's say I'm giving away free recipes. In your opinion, which of those would that fit into? Education. I might think about that more like education in you know middle school, high school, or something. But it makes sense what you're saying. How to? Maybe how to? Maybe I'm giving away re the recipe. Kind of how to? Maybe. Um, yeah. The point is that these categories here are not that good. There's no real wrong place for you to put it, and oftentimes simply the generic um, people and blogs is okay if it doesn't quite fit into one. So I'm not really setting these at the moment. Maybe I'm constantly uploading auto videos, so yeah, I'll put that. But in my channel, I'm going to upload a variety of kinds of videos, so I'm not going to set it to one. I can change it whenever I want. Whenever I upload a video, yes, but I'm going to leave it as is for the moment. License. There's basically two of them here, Standard or Creative Commons. But this one is YouTube Licenses. Um, licenses. Uh, Copyrights is a big topic, and it's more than we can really get into, but the first one, Standard and Creative Commons. Standard is, it's your video, you own it, don't let others copy it. The whole concept of copyrights is who has the right to copy this item, be it a song, an artwork, whatever. Standard is, it's you've got this protection. YouTube is basically saying if someone copies and steals your video, you have legal recourse. On the other hand, a new generation of copyrights is Creative Commons, which is basically, is a longer definition, but this is copyright free. You're not locking down your video your content, you're letting other people share it, distribute it, you're being very open with your with your product. For some people, this is what they want. They want to put out there some sort of funny video and they want more people to see it, to copy it, to change it, to distribute it. So CC would work for them, Creative Commons. For some people, I'm creating this video on how to do something. I don't want anyone else to copy it. I want them to come back to my channel. So standard license. 
you have to decide what which of these will work. You can change it at any time, but oftentimes the, the default standard that you have protections is what most people want. Yes? Are you choosing to do this for the whole channel, or do you do it on each individual video? Well, these are the defaults of each individual video that you're uploading. And these can be changed at the moment that you upload a video, or after, too. Okay. Title. Let's say I'm always going to upload a video called Tech Review Tuesday. This will automatically fill itself in to be Tech Review Tuesday. And when I upload the video this week, it's the Toshiba X29. And then next week, I'm going to upload the Tech Review Tuesday, the Acer 1123. So the point of this is that if I start off with this piece here, it will always automatically write this for me. And when I upload the new video, I can then change or add to it. In my particular case, if I'm going to blog about a lot of different things, this is going to be a, a hindrance because I'm going to need to change it or remove it every time. Description. I don't really recommend to do much on the description because each one, each description should be crafted, uh, optimized per product, but I would say here perhaps If you're going to be mentioning your website over and over on your description, it doesn't hurt to add it here, and then you will be able to, it'll be there so you don't forget, and when people watch your video, they'll have a link back to your website. Tags, again, I would leave this one alone. It depends on a case-by-case -case basis. But these are simple keywords that define what your video is about. When we actually upload the video, I'll give much more concrete examples about ideas of how to fill your title, how to fill your description, and how to fill your tags. Right here, these defaults are too generic at the moment for me to think about. But what I would say within this screen is, comments and ratings, at the moment, allow comments all, says any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your video. Well, if you don't want that, you can turn it off. On a case-by-case -case basis, I can turn the comments back on. I don't recommend this one, however, because this goes back to what I previously said about running social media as a dialogue. You can run social media as a monologue or a dialogue. Monologue is I'm just talking at people. I'm uploading videos and I'm not having any conversation and I'm just putting stuff out there and there's no community. A dialogue, I believe, works better for social media. It goes back and forth. But then we have to deal with crazy people, we have to deal with mean people, we have to deal with off-topic people. So, allow comments that have been approved. No comment will show up until you say yes, that is on topic. Yes, that is nice. Yes, that relates. And if it doesn't, they'll never show up. Any crazy person can write whatever crazy thing they want, any mean person can write whatever they want, but it'll never show up. Unless you approve it. And it's your channel, and you have perfectly that right to manage it how you want. If people are giving way too many thumbs down, well, you can hide that. This is part of the, the dialogue again. Uh, this is up to you to decide. But popularity breeds popularity. Unfortunately, perhaps negativity breeds negativity. So we'll be positive. We'll say that people, that I assume that it's going to be a good video, and people are going to give us thumbs up. As people see that a video has two or three thumbs up, they might be more inclined to also give a thumbs up. And that'll keep snowballing. On the other hand, if people are being negative, the negativity could continue. Well, we can turn it off on the videos. What's your language of your video? That's to help people find it. If people are searching in Spanish or Hebrew, or Japanese, you can set that there and then your video in that language will be found perhaps more easier in that language. This does not translate your video at all, it's just that it'll hopefully be found more by the particular audience that is searching for it. YouTube has a way for it to create tra uh, transcript or closed captions. And we can have people contribute. 
subtitles. If I don't know Spanish, but then someone contributes and helps me translate my video to Spanish, I can turn this on here. Uh, that will not show up until I approve it. So if I want people to help me translate the, my video, subtitle it, ca uh, caption it, I can turn that on. It's off by default. There's no good or bad about it. It's up to you to decide do you want contributions. Caption certification is always confusing, even to me a little bit still. But this one is related uh, to that text, your captions of your, of your video. And for most of us, we're simply going to select the first one here. This content has never aired on television in the U.S. If I'm creating a video to upload to YouTube, it probably never appeared on any real channel. So uh, that's safe to put there. Well, some of us may have aired, may have had a video air on, you know, the local Fox station, the local ABC station. So, did it air on a regular TV, but with or without captions? Um, this has not aired on TV since 2012. So, I would recommend most of us to choose this first one. This content has never aired on TV. If your content has aired on TV, we need to figure out which will apply most, most to you, but probably this one's the best for most people. YouTube can give you suggestions about how to improve your video. If it's too shaky, it can let you activate shake reduction. If the colors look weird, it can help you by activating fix my colors, and so forth. I personally find this worthless because I would do this already in Movie Maker or iMovie or whatever. iMovie and Movie Maker have better features to reduce shakiness and fix colors. So I personally turn that off because it's going to pop up to say, would you like to fix your video? You may leave it on, you may check it, you may see the results, you can revert it, you can cancel the result. But I personally never find that useful. Shakiness is something that you can fix. Somewhat, yes. If it's really extreme, like you're in a roller coaster, no. But if your hand is a little shaky, um, it can kind of stabilize it a little. video location. If people are searching for something with a particular location and we've attached the location to our video, our video could show up. Let's say I've got Victor's Bakery or my amazing blog here and it's San Diego based and I want people in San Diego to find my videos. Well, I can attach a location here. San Diego. Right there. People searching for how to bake a cake in San Diego could possibly find my video because I've attached San Diego to it and I've written my headline, my title as how to bake a cake and could help me get found. Do you want to show people all of your views? All your hundreds of views? Or do you want to hide from people I don't have any views? So you can do this on or off. Maybe because uh, you've just started off the channel and you don't really have traffic, maybe you don't want to show off you don't have traffic yet, and as you start to build traffic, show, look at all my traffic, because popularity breeds popularity. As people see, this has been a popular video, I will watch it, I will thumbs up. And on the flip side, if people say, this has got zero views, why would I care? I won't watch it. So it could be helpful or detrimental. If you made any changes here, remember to save at the top right corner. Any questions on upload defaults? Featured content, we don't we can't do much here. Make a note that this is for the future. Featured content is sort of like to put uh, ads on your own on your own channel. This is that uh, Featured content. This is self promotion, basically. Once you've got videos, <clears throat> more than one, you have your video playing, and as soon as your video ends, it will tell the person 
why not watch this one? Autoplay is still in effect, but it will also say, why not watch this one next? One of the ones you choose right here. Feature one of your videos or playlists across your videos. So if, you're, if you want to constantly show one particular video to people, when they're done with one of your videos, show them also this other one that's featured, set featured here. Related to that is the ad. Choose a video that, and it could be selected as one of the one of a few to promote it to viewers. So it's just another way to show off your own videos. The limitation here is I believe it needs to be less than 30 seconds. This one up here can be any length, but I believe this one has a limitation of time. Let's see, does it say here? You have to agree. I think on the next screen. I think it's I think at the most it's under one minute long, but it's like a quick ad on your own videos to promote more of your videos. So all of this is self-promotion. Branding. This is to add a little watermark to your video. Like when you watch uh, any other channel on TV or news and such at the corner, they've got their logo throughout the show. Adding watermark, if you upload a little graphic, it'll put it in the corner of all your videos. So if your video goes viral and spreads to other places, your logo is still on your video and your logo is active. If someone clicks on it, it goes back to your channel. So if it ended up on someone's blog, it'll have your logo, they click, and they go back to your channel. It should be a little square graphic. It should be transparent and a simple basic color. So if your logo has multiple colors, you need to either simplify it down to one color, ask your graphic designer, put it in one simple color with transparency, and it'll appear on the, appear on the bottom right corner of your videos. Advanced If you need to change logos and the name of your channel, here it is. What's your, the country you're targeting? You should set that as soon as you can. You're probably not creating videos for Afghanistan, the default. So you should change that to the appropriate locality. And here are some keywords that could help your channel further get found. The other screen were keywords of individual videos, whereas here are keywords to help your whole channel get found. Regarding these advertisements, this is all related to do you want to make money off of your YouTube channel? Basically, it's one way is ads, like I've said. So if you turn off, don't show ads on my videos. Well, that's going to affect uh, some of your revenue via monetization. Disable interest-based, I would leave that alone. Both of these defaults, I would leave these alone. Uh, if YouTube is going to put ads on your videos for you to profit, YouTube, you would want YouTube to put videos related or most likely of what people will click on. If they're watching my tech channel, hopefully it will display tech commercials, not commercials about baking or pets or whatever. So if I say disable interest-based ads, it'll show these random video, these random ads on your videos that'll be less likely to be clicked on, less likely for you to make money off of. So leaving this on and then turning it off reduces your channel's significantly reduces your channel's revenue. Yes. I got a little lost about does not apply to videos that you monetize. Are they saying if you monetize your video, it, I mean... If you monetize your video, you will see ads. That's the whole point of how you make money off your videos. So they're, they're saying that you're not going to have both an ad, an actual video ad, and then static ads on the side. Like I've seen that before where you've got a, an ad that's playing and automatically starts playing when they bring up your video. But there's also things along the side of those like little videos. Yeah, video displayed alongside my videos. So um, 
the reason I say to leave it as is is because that's how you can generate the most revenue. As you start to pick and choose, don't show this, don't show that, well, that, gen that diminishes how you can profit from your account. But theoretically, you can have both things happening, or you can Yeah, have you can have both by leaving it on. If you're going to be profiting from your videos at some point, you're going to need to create and link an AdWords account. That's basically the escrow account where your profits will be held. So every month, based on views and clicks and all of that, YouTube will be accumulating some amount of money in an escrow account, in a temporary holding account, in an AdWords account. It's going to link to the same Gmail address. It's all related to the same password, but YouTube is going to store the money there temporarily, and then once a month then it'll that money will get deposited over to your main bank account. This is the whole process to set up. It will ask you for a bank account, a social security number and all that because it's gonna be real money that it gives you. Yes? Are there any stats about what people make on the average from this thing? Yeah definitely there was just uh, I, I just saw an ad uh, an article about this the other day. I forgot how much it was but it can be one I think said like eight thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. so quarter, how well, is that really the exception? Or? That's more the exception, yes. Yeah. How much? Hundreds of most people make 20 or 30 bucks a month. Personally, That's on one of my channels, I'm making like $10 a month. So I can buy a couple of lattes off of that. Mm -hmm. But other people, if they put a lot more effort into it, they can reach, they can get a lot, a lot of money out of it. So, yes. So at what point? No, it's as soon as you, it's as soon as you we'll see that when we upload the video, we can click a button, monetize. It's not that they decide if it's worthy. You say, I want my video monetized right from the beginning. Uh, the algorithm and all of that of how often it gets viewed and all of that, that's a different sort of thing. But you can decide right away to start monetizing your videos. But theoretically, loads of people can watch your video, and nobody clicks on that ad if they don't like your ad. Exactly. Uh, That's why we leave it on here. Don't turn off interest-based ads. That way, it, it, it'll most probably show ads that people want to click on. If I turn this off, it'll just show random ads. And then why would someone click on that pet food ad on a technology video? So we can get plenty of these answers about how much... How much do make? How much money do people make from YouTube? Um, Three hundred seventy-five to eighteen seventy-five with one million views. That's one particular answer, and we can find many more. This is one particular answer. And uh, here's just another spot. Do you want to show how many people have subscribed to your channel or not? As a beginner, perhaps, maybe you don't show that to sort of perhaps give the illusion that you do have traffic and subscribers and such. And as you start to build your subscriber base, then show that and show, you know, strength in numbers, popularity breeds popularity, and you'll see that people subscribe more as they, as they see that you have subscribers. If you took the SEO class, on Mondays, in there we talk about Google Analytics, which is a way to track the traffic to your website. Well, you can use Google Analytics to further track more data about your YouTube channel. So if you've got a Google Analytics tracking ID, you can put its code here, and Google Analytics will track even more data about the traffic and demographics of your audience. If you made any of these changes, remember to click Save at the bottom. So those are some settings I think they're valuable to talk about early on because of the defaults and so forth. We'll take one last quick break, and then we will upload our video, and we'll see well what does that look like and nuances about that. It's 8.41, we'll take a break until 8.50. Uh, and then we'll uh, uh, 
upload our video and see what that entails.